Hello everyone and welcome back to Part Development in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this video the Elegant Design Bureau is proud to present its newest custom part. Uh, we have previously brought to you the wraparound service module and the advanced tug and this time it is a part to recover engines, well actually the entire stage, but uh, during splashdowns using parachutes. So this came about during a uh, live stream where I'm accepting viewer uh, submissions viewer craft to fill contracts in a collaborative career mode and I get these launchers with parachutes slapped to the side of it so that they can be recoverable using stage recovery and I have previously required floats so that it's a little bit more realistic I guess but now I have developed a part to specifically protect the engines now this has nothing to do with SpaceX this would not work with the SpaceX Falcon 9 because that's uh, obviously uh, using thrust in order to make a soft landing. This is specifically for parachute landings. It wouldn't work with uh, the propelled landings. But anyway, uh, I'll show you the part in action in a moment with this crayon shaped rocket ignition. And launch. So what we have at the bottom here is an RD-170. Broadly speaking, this is either a Zenit or a Soyuz 5, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I'm flying at uh, Cape Canaveral rather than a Baikonur, despite the fact that this is a Russian sort of rocket. Uh, because we are trying to do a splashdown in Baikonur, you don't really splash down after you separate the first stage. Uh, there's a lot of land in the way. So we are here at Cape Canaveral for that reason. but. The RD-170 was a good engine to try and recover like this. Uh, there are complications as far as the shape of this part. This is our part. This is the Pac-Man engine encapsulation device. I have better steer the rocket otherwise we're going to flop over. Uh, for splashdown recovery. Uh, or I guess EDSR or just the Pac-Man device is what I would like to call it. Uh, and what it does is it's just a shroud that wraps around the engine. It will not protect the engine thermally, okay? So if you if you uh, decide to bring this in real hot, it is not going to help you. Uh, this is not a heat shield. It is meant to be light. It gives nominal, you know, basic sort of aerodynamic protection, uh, not at extremely high speeds, and it uh, it mostly is meant to protect uh, for. Wa to be watertight. It's meant to be watertight. That was my goal. Now, I have no idea how heavy such a thing would be. I just made a best guess based on the fairing parts. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to go with that. So, once we uh, separate off the second stage, we will see how it all works. I have tried it without the air brakes, the engine that gets destroyed. Which is good. I mean, I think I wasn't trying to make this like a fairing or anything. This is not meant to be super protective, just protective enough. It has at least two special features though. It has its own control core, so you don't have to add one of those. It also has built-in RCS, though that only seems to work in 1.3.1 and above. I don't know why it doesn't work in 1.2.2, and that's a shame because... The whole career mode thing that I'm doing, where which inspired this whole idea, is actually in KSP 1.2.2. Okay, so now we have our first stage, which we want to recover with parachutes. I've got parachutes on it, and floats on the opposite side. Uh, that's good for looks and for balance, though these aren't my usual floats, unfortunately. So, I press 7 to arm the parachute and initiate the recovery system. Um, let me just toggle that so that you can see it open and close. And this is why I call it the Pac-Man. It sort of clips the edges of the nozzle a little bit. And it doesn't work... F I mean, you'll, you're gonna have to tuck the engines in a bit uh, if they're really long nozzle engines. And it might have... there might be a sort of a minimum stage diameter that it can actually wrap around the engines. Like an F1 engine, I don't think you can make it a 4 meter stage and expect this thing to wrap around it. I could have made it longer, but I wanted to make it compatible potentially with a uh, heat shield recovery system like uh, I think the Vulcan rocket is supposed to use. 
So you'd put, uh, instead of recovering the entire stage, you'd put a heat shield on this side and some propellant and then use the RCS to steer. It has the command module inside. And then this would be sort of like a, not, not quite a capsule shape, but you couldn't make it a capsule shape because a capsule shape uh, wouldn't really fit the engine very well. So this is the best um, sort of compromise shape I could come up with. Of course, in the heat shield case, if you're doing a heat shield recovery of the engine block, um, then this side is not going to be hitting the atmosphere anyway. It's going to be thermally protected on the opposite side. The downside is that not all engines, because uh, if you can take a look at the engine here, the RD-170, it's extending past this line here. So uh, this engine, th the block would have to be much wider the um, what you got Pac-Man would have to be much wider in order to accommodate this engine for that kind of re-entry uh, with the heat shield unless you put some sort of tank in between the heat shield and the Pac-Man so you know there are all sorts of compromises you have to make but uh, mainly if you're trying to recover it from a really high toss in that case with the heat shield and all you're probably trying to recover a small Hydrolox engine. And since Hydrolox engines have really big tanks, it probably won't be too big a deal. Like the J2, this would work fine for, or like a bunch of RL10s or something like that. I think it'd be okay. Anyway, we are waiting for it to hit the atmosphere. Let's time warp. So we have the air brakes out. There's nothing I can do about it pointing this way because the mass is all down here it's eventually going to point this way down well I don't know maybe it wants to turn the other way around this will be a first every other time I've seen this during testing it goes Pac-Man first I thought about making a texture changer so that uh, we could have different colors on the bottom this, these colors might not be to your liking. They're not really to my liking either. It's a little bit awkward. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit. Okay, here we go. The G-forces will pile on pretty darn quickly. Okay. And yeah, without the air brakes, the heat would be too much for it. Okay, parachute deployment, take in the brakes. Pressing 8 to deploy. These are not my usual floats. There are, there are bigger floats in the USI. Uh, I think the survival pack was um, merged into one of the other packs. It used to be the USI survival pack. So four parachutes. And there we have it. So the part doesn't weigh too much right now because I didn't want to make use of it too onerous. Especially since, you know, you're gonna have to put the mass of the parachutes and potentially floats and also air brakes to make it all work out. And there we go. So in theory, protected from the seawater, all the corrosion and nasty business of all that. And of course, uh, since it doesn't do the, the, do the whole floppy thing that the Falcon 9 did, its inner stage wouldn't be destroyed or damaged that much because that was due to the impact of the thing tipping over. But yeah, and so this is nice and recoverable. Okay, well, I'm not saying that the Pac-Man is the most revolutionary piece of hardware ever designed, but it was an interesting idea I decided to try to make. And sort of looks like that in here. And unfortunately, the, when it's uh, retracted, it sort of blocks the RCS ports, but I did a good faith attempt at making the RCS ports. They can control all three uh, rotations and also translation in this direction, down, if you will. So yeah, the control core inside the Pac-Man is pointed upward, so no problem there. If that, that was the only controller you had, it would still point in the right direction to launch. Uh, perhaps I'll be doing other similarly animated parts. I'm thinking about it, like uh, a fairing up, but I mean, 
when you think about a reusable fairing, what exactly are you trying to do, right? I mean, so I thought about a reusable fairing, but and that could be interesting. And it's sort of like the front end of BFS or whatever they're calling it now, but it's a specialized sort of situation. But uh, maybe I'll make a part like that. So anyway, on that note, and the link uh, to this part will be in the video description, and it doesn't seem to work properly in 1.2.2, but 1.3.1 it checks out in both stock and in realism overhaul. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.